All right, welcome to 10 Things You Didn't Know About Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. My ambition tonight is to tell you 10 things that you didn't know about this book, um, and maybe 10 things that you'll actually walk away with, you know, wishing that you had learned earlier. This is the fourth talk in a series of seven that Full Circle here in Oklahoma City is sponsoring. Almost all of us are over the fact that the Thunder were thrashed um, in the finals. But it is nice that we're not talking about thunder and heat all the time, even though we're at, we're at triple digits right now. Um, sort of the heat wave continues. Um, uh, so I was not the first one to make that joke in Oklahoma City. I know that. All right, so don't blame me for that one. All right. We've done our warm-ups. You've, you've already had your trivia warm-up or whatever. Let's start with why uh, this book is so important. All the books are important, but... Uh, Philosopher's Stone is the template for the entire series. It's critically important. Uh, Deathly Hallows sums up the entire package. Obviously very important. And I wrote a whole book on that subject, so I, I'm sort of attached to that finale. But Goblet of Fire is the center and is the centerpiece, really. And you can't understand how the books work without really getting Goblet of Fire. The author in 2000, when the book was released, said, how, in answer to the question, how vital is book four in the whole seven book series? She says, crucial. The fourth is a very, very, very important book. The last very all caps. Well, you know because you read it, something incredibly happens, incredibly important happens in book four, and also it's literally a central book. It's almost the heart of the series, and it's pivotal. It's very difficult to talk about, and I can't wait for the day. Someone's read all seven, and I can talk completely freely about Goblet of Fire, but it's a very important book. Now, because I have a friend named Lisa Bunker, a librarian in Arizona, that tracks every word that Joanne Rowling says, I can tell you, on the authority of Lisa Bunker, that no one to this day has asked Joanne Rowling why she thinks book four is a very important book. But tonight, we'll go into that. We'll go into that. I'm going to talk about 10 things. Uh, do you have the 10 things thing up there? Go ahead. Go up there and put the 10 things up there. We're going to talk about the trouble that she had putting together Goblet of Fire and why, why it's important. We're going to talk about the ring composition of the book and how this novel is a perfect ring. We'll talk about literary alchemy. We'll talk about the experience of time inside the books. I actually spent the time today counting up every time the word time appears in this book. So it's a long morning. Uh, we'll talk about the very center of this book, chapter 19, The Hungarian Horn Tale, which is not only the center of this book, but obviously the center of the entire series. Um, and why that book is, in, why that's important. We're talking about Goblet as the defining center of the series between Philosopher's Stone and Deathly Hallows. We're talking about the ring images, the circular images that Rowling embeds in the book as if to drive the point home that circles are important. We'll talk about the Christian imagery of the goblet of fire. Then we'll digress from that peak to the, to the, the depths of the political allegory of the story, why we have the Stalinist show trial, why we have uh, SPEW and such. And then we'll talk about finally the mad eye of Alistair Moody. Right, those up. Um, all right, 